there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to do a technique called open drip technique and we are going to do a very simple watercolor. And I'm gonna start by very, very lightly drawing an oval on my paper. I want it to kind of take up quite a bit of the space and I'm just using a watercolor greeting card because um, for simple flowers, I like to have something, you know, I don't, I don't like to fuss too much. Now I'm gonna, I just drew that oval, it's very, very organic looking. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna draw the petals darker, but that's just to give me an, uh, kind of an overview of where I want my petals to be. And then I am actually gonna get the stamen in right off the bat. So I'm gonna draw the contour of this petal here. So this is a foreshortened petal that's kind of, um, it's kind of, you know, in front. I'm going to draw the stamen of the hibiscus because the hibiscus stamen is very, um, oops, I feel like my pen is, is so loose, um, my pencil, because um, it's very iconic, you know, the hibiscus has like a really kind of like fluffy, um, I don't know what you call it, fluffy kind of roughly stamen so I want to get that get that in there and once I've got that in I can put the other petals around so I'm gonna have one that kind of comes out like this and I might go just a smidgen outside of my lines but just having that that guideline there just helps me from going like having one petal just way out of sync with hibiscus you have such long kind of flowy petals anyway that you don't need to like I don't know you can you can take some liberties here but if you, but just having that guideline, I I feel for me anyway, it just it just helps kind of keep me from going a little too wild. I love big petal flowers for this technique because you can really um, you can really have fun with letting your paints flow. Okay, that's really all I need to do here. See, so just a basic basic sketch. I want to get, um, I'm going to have the stem, like the stem, think of the stamen as like an extension of the stem. So I'm going to put the stem out back this way. And I'm going to put a little bud here, which is just a rounded diamond. And I'm just going to put a few leaves. You can put a lot of leaves if you want to, because they can be real packed up around the flower. I'm not going to get uh, get too crazy with it, but I am going to kind of um, like use the leaves as a way to kind of balance and frame things out. Now, if you have extra lines that you don't want, like in between your petals, maybe on your petals from your original oval, then go ahead and soften them with an eraser. I prefer to use a soft white eraser like this. You can go get those at the dollar store or any um, office supply store. Or you probably have some in your stash already. I like them because they don't mar the paper. They're very gentle. Um, you can also use like whatever eraser you have, but I just find like, I worry with kneaded erasers that they might deposit an oil on the paper, so I don't like to use those personally, usually on watercolor paper. Now, I thought it'd be fun to reintroduce myself to this brush, um, which is a uh, pointed filbert by Princeton Select. It's a number six, and it's a pretty cheap brush, to be honest. So I'm gonna start off um, by wetting this petal back here. And I'm not wetting, I'm, I'm I'm going to try to wet it as carefully as I can, but I'm not worried so much about going right around the stamen because I'm going to, I'm going to, um, when I put color in, I'm going to be real careful about where I start the color. So I should be able to go in there and carve really close to that design. So when you wet the paper, you got to make sure that the paper is a little bit shiny. So if you tip it to the water, I feel like my brush is not very clean. <laughs> I haven't used this one in a while. Um, you just want to make sure that your paper has a little bit of a shine to it so your paint can move. And really any watercolor should work for this, but if you have a paint that's a little bit more flowy than others, then go for that one. I'm going to start off with a um, with kind of a fuchsia magenta color here. And I'm going to start that down in the center and just kind of let it flow. And the nice thing about this is you, you get really vibrant colors because you let the mixing happen on the paper. Now I'm actually going to take the excess and just put it on my palette and clean my brush. And then I'm going to grab 
Um, I think I'll grab some of this Thalo Blue. And it's a nice dark, rich color, so I'm gonna go in. And you don't want that much water on your brush. I mean, you have to have enough to make your paint, uh, um, <clears throat> you know, to pick the paint up, make it flow. But you want the, if you have too much water on your brush, it's hard for the, for the paint to leave it because you've got a lot of water on your paper, a lot of water on your brush. Sometimes they don't, they, uh, that, that paint doesn't wanna move. I'm also gonna grab, um, you don't have to, but because I have this lavender in this set, I think I'm gonna grab some of that and add that over here where it's gonna be a little bit lighter. And I think I'll drip in a little bit more of the fuchsia color down here. Just make sure you kind of define in around little bits of the hibis hibiscus stamen as you do the, these two petals here that touch it. Now you might get blooms and, and stuff like that in this technique, but that's part of the fun. That's part of the, uh, that's part of what's really fun about it. So I'm gonna tip my thing around a little bit. I'm gonna let the colors blend. Isn't that pretty? And then what I'm gonna do is take my very fancy tool, this credit card scraper. It's just a piece of cut up gift card or credit card. And I'm gonna scrape in the veins. And you can also scrape in the wrinkles in because um, hibiscus is very like crepey texture to their um, to the petals so you can scrape that in. Now this is gonna get, be, get really repetitive so I probably won't do every petal uh, on camera but then the important thing to do next is you've got to skip a petal so we're gonna go over here. You want to make sure whatever you're gonna do is not going to touch the other one and if you have a fold over petal treat that like it's its own petal okay so we need to make sure that we let one area dry before we go next to it. And that's, uh, that's really important, otherwise we're going to have everything just blurring together and we're going to lose the, the kind of fun little cellular action that we get and we're also going to, um, we're going to lose, you know, they'll just kind of blur together we won't get those hard edges that will give it that kind of, that fun, that fun look. So um, we're going to start again, we're going to do the exact same thing. Just remember, when you're doing this, no matter how many petals you have, you are going to you are gonna skip a petal. You're not gonna go right next door. Oh, it's really flowing good that time. I'm gonna do some of the phthalo. Trying not to pick up so much water. That's why I like this palette, because I can have the, pan, the, the paint dry up here and then I can have the wash over there so I can just pick up the dry paint where I want it to be, where it's a little bit more concentrated. A little bit of that up here. Let it flow, maybe grab some of that lavender. Oh, I think I want to go back to the phthalo and add the phthalo in there. You might need to just make sure you define your edges just because sometimes when you wet the paper you don't actually get it right out to the edge. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that magenta color and just add it in there so I can help it blend. This is really intuitive, guys. You, I'm using a lot of color here. I want really vibrant results and always keep in mind that watercolor dries a little bit lighter. Um, I like having that lavender in there that's kind of opaque because I think it's gonna give some really interesting effects. And again, we're gonna scrape in our veins. When you scrape, you actually abrade the paper so you're actually putting a little bit of physical texture in there too, which I think is just really fun for this. Okay, so you're gonna do that to all those petals. You're just gonna be careful not to paint on the stamen. And now we can proceed on to the, uh, the leaves here. And I think I'm gonna do them in more of like a, kind of like a brush stroke fashion. I'm gonna start with this nice bright lemon yellow. 
and I'm going to tip my brush into this hooker's green. Probably a little too much, uh, too much water on there, and I'm just going to easy breezy put in some leaves. Now I tape my card down to a just a scrap of cardboard, and. Um, I just make sure that when I go to draw, I know what side the opening is. So sometimes I even write on my tape, like I'll write up or I'll write opening or something like that, just so I know where that is because, I mean, we've all done it. If you've ever painted greeting cards before, you've done it and you've painted that sucker upside down and then you're like, ah, oh, darn, and then you gotta like cut it, you gotta cut the painting off and glue it onto another greeting card. So I try to uh, either just be real careful when I paint that I'm right side up, or if, I, if I'm like prepping for a class and I'm taping a bunch of people's papers down, I just go ahead and write <laughs> up or make an arrow or something so that um, my student will know what side is up. I like the expressiveness of this brush. I picked this up. Um, it's really nice if you have an art store nearby and you can, and you can purchase a brush in person because it's, um, I'm going to clean my brush before I grab some more yellow, um, because if you can kind of like look at the bristles and make sure they're in really good shape, that's really nice. Or buy from a trusted seller like Jerry's Autorama or Blick, someplace like that where, or, or Cheap Joe's, where they, um, where you can trust their stuff. Even if you buy from Amazon, I mean, a lot of times they're coming, it's coming from Cheap Joe, uh, it's coming from, uh, from Blick or Jerry's. I don't know about Cheap Joe's, I don't know what they do, but, um. But then you know you're gonna get you're gonna get something good. So like I will I will clean my brush. I'm gonna go back into the yellow. But if I'm going into the green, I don't I don't fuss about it. So notice if I don't have very much paint on my brush, if I just went into that green dried paint, I can get some decent veins right there. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're painting. Now I'm going right up to that that petal there. So I'll have to be careful and make sure that's dry before I go in and paint that petal. I'm going to clean my brush because I want some more yellow. Hope you're finding this, this helpful. I know that sometimes I, pray, I put some pretty long tutorials out there and that can kind of be um, overwhelming to new painters. So hopefully having that easy breezy one once in a while will be a good thing. I'm going to get the yellow. I'm going to grab a little bit of that green. I try not to, like I try to just keep reusing the same colors over and over as I work so that I get harmony. Now, because I taped this, I, you know, I wasn't even gonna have a background, but I'm like, ah, I taped the, I taped it, so now I kind of want something in the background. Um, and I love the, I've got some like bluish purples going there, so having some yellow, some orangey yellows in the background would be really pretty. So I think I want to do something like that. I'm gonna stick with the same brush. I am going to be very careful not to touch anything I've just painted, but I am going to kind of wet leaving a gap between the tape edges and my flower. You can use any watercolor reading cards, by the way. These are the Artezas, but man, they've been out of stock, it seems like, practically since they launched them. And uh, it's really a bummer because I really like these, but, um, but they've been out of stock, so that's a bummer. So I'm just gonna go with some yellow. I'm gonna take you know what, I think I'll just very gently put that yellow in there. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of the, I'm gonna see how that that color, that pink that we've already used mixes with yellow. I'm gonna see if I can get a decent orange. Yeah, I can get an okay orange with that. I think I'll just add a little bit of that here and there. Make a nice opposite color for the, uh, for my, um, my flower. That was a color, right? Yeah. Did I grab that one? I don't think I grabbed that one. Oh shoot, just one for my... All right, I'm not really advising this, but I got a little carried away and I went in a little too close to my greens, but... I wasn't intending to get that close, but I think that's fine. So I'm going to wet this side before that dries. Going to leave a gap here, still leaving a gap, so I won't have to wait any longer. 
when I'm ready to do those petals. Leave about a quarter inch gap and don't paint that close so it can kind of blush in. You can just get, kind of get a rouge vignette effect. Do the yellow at the edges. It's really difficult, you know, because you want to you want to fill it in. But if you get a nice kind of just rouge effect, it's good. So I'm cleaning and drying my brush. I'm just going to go on that edge and just soften it so it looks kind of like a rouge. And I just got into that petal, so hopefully it doesn't make a mess. So much for clean and simple. I've already made it a little more complicated with the background, but I think that'll be all right. Now to get your other colors in while the paper's still damp so you don't end up with blossoms. If you don't want them, I mean blossoms aren't the end of the world. And if you do want to go up close to the flower like I'm doing here at the bottom, just let it dry before you paint those petals. And I would try to be fairly light in the background so it doesn't compete with the uh, focal point too much. I personally don't like that kind of cut out area with the with a, so much white right there, so I'm just going to soften that with a damp brush. I'm also going to soften it up here. A little bit more yellow, kind of toned down yellow. Okay, um, I think we probably ought to let things dry a little bit. Actually, I think I think we're I think we're all right to go ahead and do that one. Just wet the petal. Gonna do the same thing. You probably won't have quite as much pink on this one just because um, you don't see too much of the middle of that petal. So I would just give it a little slice of the pink like that. Go with your phthalo. Oh, I don't feel like I have that wet enough. Oh, I don't have that wet enough at all. I'm gonna grab some of that lavender. I think I'll have to go back in with the phthalo, but I want to get that lavender in. Things usually dry up pretty fast in the winter if you live in a cold area with the heat on. Uh, if you live in a tropical area, probably nothing dries fast ever, but. Go back into the phthalo because that petal's a little too light. Okay, this one's not dripping so much because um, I didn't start off with it wet enough. And it's drying up on me as I'm working here. So this one is... Uh, not behaving that well. I'm going to go back in with the red and see if I can get that to just kind of drip and bleed a little bit. I don't want big clumps. Like, I've got some big clumps there, so I'm just going to try to soften it a little bit. And I'm also going to grab my credit card scraper. Now, when you're doing this petal, you're scraping out away from the center, okay? So keep that in mind. So like you'll be going out, 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 up, and then out, 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 kind of like the the uh, ribs on a pumpkin. All right, not crazy about that one. All right, gonna let that dry and then um, do the other petals the same way. And when we come back, I'll do those overturn ones just so you can see that, and we'll finish it up. Okay, now we're going to look at this dry, and you can see the different effects on the different petals. My favorite is this one here because you can distinctly see the kind of lavender color, the 
phthalo blue, the magenta, and then you can see these areas where they were the magenta and the phthalo mixed and you got kind of an indigo color. So I really like that, but the thing that's great about this is that every petal is going to look a little different and it's going to give you a nice lively effect. One of the favorite things I like to do when I'm painting cards like this is to have like four or five going at once. Tape them all down and then I'll just um, kind of go from one to the next. Uh, poppies work really well with this technique too, so any flower that's got a really big petal is going to be beautiful with this. So please try it. It's um, it's so fun. Lilies, anything. Uh, so now I've wet that one. Now this I'm just going to keep really light. And what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to clean up this palette right here. This little pan, the lavender that's got a little bit of phthalo in there because I wasn't very careful when I, uh, when I um, put it in there. I am going to be careful as I go around the edge and then I'm just going to fill it in. I do think I need a little bit of variety but I want to actually almost base coat it with this paler shade and then I'll drop the other shades in so I get a little bit of a dominance with this and I won't end up with with paint that's too dark because I want these overturned areas to be a little bit lighter. I'm just scooching that up so I don't have a gap. Now this effect actually works a little bit better on cheaper cellulose based papers because it's got a slipperier, slipperier surface and it, you end up with some fun blossoms and blooms in there too. So if you like that, give that a try. Now I'm going to pick up paint from my from my palette. See, I hopefully have enough there. If not, then I can, I can get a little bit. I just don't want to get too much and I'm just going to dab it and let it do its thing. Just a little bit of variety. I think that's pretty good. I'm just going to tip it and let it flow, see if it does something interesting. And then when you scrape your your um, your veins or your crinkles, just remember you're going from the outside of the edge back to the center of the flower. So you just want to make sure that it makes sense when you're scraping that you've got one of these outside ruffly edges and you're bringing it in. You don't have to go the whole distance. Just suggest here and there. I think that looks pretty good. And then over here, we don't really have a lot of space, so I think I can just pick up some of the... I'm not even going to try to drip it in there because it's not a lot of space there. I'm just going to fill that in and then do a very, very small amount of veining. I like this brush because I can get a pretty good detail on it, although I did slurp outside of the lines a little bit, so I'm just going to bring that out a little bit. Maybe I will add a little bit darker there just because I went out a little bit. That way it'll cover my pencil line a little bit. Oh my gosh, how many times can I say a little bit? <laughs> Sometimes I'll tap my paper too and help it move a little bit. <laughs> I said it again. Oh, I hope nobody's playing a drinking game with this video. I always wonder that. <laughs> that would be funny. I think that's fine. All right, so then what you can do, if you say, say that you see some little patches or you see some areas where you've got some distinct folds and you like the way it looks, you can go in with your brush and you can add some kind of stripes of more intense color. I'm just going to make sure that the my brush isn't too wet and make sure there's no water on the metal part of my brush because it will slide on down and it will uh, mess things up. So you can just kind of like throw in a few veins if you want to. I try not to go too crazy because you don't want to like you don't want to undo that really fresh look that you've been cultivating. Less is more my friends in this case. And see, uh, that's what I like about this palette. You can get the palette separately, by the way, if you don't need the paint. Because um, I can have my my gob of paint up there, and I can pull it out and get like a nice wash over here. Nothing goes to waste. Um, I do my mixing on the mixing half of the palette, so I don't contaminate anything. Uh, but it's just really, really nice. I don't want to do too much to that, because I really like the way that one came out. Uh, this one had some gobby bits that I wasn't crazy about, so I do not mind. Filling that in. Oh, so this, uh, the set of paints I'm using is the pink palette. So if you're looking at this on Amazon, I'll link to it, but you're going to see there's an option for a blue palette. 
Um, and I'll also link to the palette on its own if you're interested, but um, the blue palette has different colors. So if you don't like these, this kind of more floral assortment, maybe you paint something different, um, you might want to check the other colors that come in the other one in case that's more useful to you if you're looking to purchase paint. But like I said, this will go with whatever, you can do this with whatever paints you have. You don't have to anything special. Now I'm going to take some of the uh, Thalo Blue and take some of that Hooker's Green so I make kind of a darker green and I'm just going to go in add a little detail. Look, I love how I can get a nice fine line with this, with this brush. It's so fun. I don't know why I've had that like, I had it in a different paint cup than what I typically use. I don't know. I, I bet like I, I bet like Amazon has a Princeton Selects. I had never heard of them until I saw them at AC Moore, but um, but they're kind of fun. They're not they're not very affordable. I mean I'm sorry. Strike that. Reverse it. They're not very expensive. <laughs> and I've always had good luck with Princeton. I've had good luck with Royal Nickel. So you know if you're looking for a more affordable brush, I like Creative Mark too, but they are a little bit more expensive than those brands. And if you don't um, have access to a Jerry's Artorama then or a, or Amazon US, then you you know we'll have a hard time getting that. Now in the center, I want to do a little coloring on the stamen itself. Remember this background color that we mixed? It was like the the yellow plus the red. Well, I'm taking that dirty the green left on my brush. I'm mixing it in with that. I just kind of want a little bit of a tone and I'm going to blot my brush quite a bit and I'm going to dab some of that in there. Get a little bit of yellow. And I can even do a little bit because I can see some pinkish purple reflections towards the uh, the bottom of it on my reference photo from Pixabay. Um, it's called Hibiscus Violet Flower. If I forget to link it, I'll try to remember to link it. I'll leave it open on my computer so I don't forget, hopefully. Um, Hibiscus Violet Flower on Pixabay. So if you're watching on your smart TV or something, you can look that up and find it. I want a little more yellow in there to make it pop, I think. I don't want too much, but I want a little... All right, and I also want to add some spatters. You don't have to do this. That's why I wait till the end to do it. So you can look at this right now and say, hmm, do I want spatters? Do I not? Um, you can always, of course, rewind it. If you're like, hmm, I don't know if I liked her thing better with spatters or without, you can rewind it. You can look at it and decide for yourself. What I will often do is kind of put my hand over any place I definitely don't want to spatter. I don't mind if it gets on the flower, but I don't want it on the stamen. This brush is not the best for spattering because it's not really juicy. Nice thing about having these wells like this is I can make a spattering, a spattering wash and I don't have to put it on my um, I don't have to put it on my, my mixing area and then end up wasting it if it's like a, if it's a single color spatter I want to do. And if you don't if you do get it someplace you don't want it, right after you spatter it, just blot it and it should come right up and not really affect your picture or it'll be really light so you won't even really notice it. Um, and I think I'll do that lavender color. I think that'd be a really nice spatter color. I just wanted to do this with one brush, but please feel free to, uh, I want a big splat right there. Please feel free to switch brushes if you've got a spattering brush you prefer, but I was like, hmm, wouldn't it be fun just to use one brush? Wouldn't it be fun just to like limit things a little bit? I get a little excessive at times. I know it's shocking, isn't it? All right, I'm going to dry this and then we'll take the tape up and see how it looks. All right, we can remove the tape and see how it turned out. And if you have a hard time removing your tape, you can always heat it up with a hair dryer or heat tool and that will loosen the adhesive so it will come up nice and easy for you. That way you don't have to worry about ripping your paper. And there it is. I think it's nice and fresh and springy and fun. If you ran into any issues with the center of your stamen and you want to add some white to it, you can use a gel pen or a paint pen. In fact, I'll show you how, because I think mine could used to be a little fluffier. It's completely up to you whether you use a gel pen or a paint pen. Um, I really like the, uh, the Posca pens because well, I have some and I just refilled them. You just gotta make sure you have them good and shaken up, whereas a gel pen, you don't have to worry about that so much, although with a gel pen you have clogging issues sometimes. So 
what I would do is just maybe add a few stray dots just to get those really fine, um, those little fine stamens. I think it really does add, a, add another level of just detail and is really pretty and it gives a little bit of visual texture too. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll have everything linked down below. And um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed that. If you're not a subscriber and you'd like to see all of my new tutorials when they come out, hit that subscribe button. And um, check out my other videos if you want to do some more painting, creating, crafting. I do it all. It's a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy it as well. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.